So it all started with something we call the Intergalactic Travel Bureau, which is this live experience where we invite the public to come and plan their vacation to outer space. So Jana and I actually met at the Intergalactic Travel Bureau. She answered a call um, to become an intergalactic travel agent because we were recruiting scientists. I was come. basically procrastinating on my PhD thesis and I got an email, do you want to plan space vacations and how do you say no to that as an astronomer? And so that's how I met Olivia and got involved with the Intergalactic Travel Bureau. Yeah, so we've been planning space vacations since about 2012, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after a while we just thought, well, we got to write a book. And can I ask if your uh, current headwear has anything to do with <laughs> oh, this calling. I'm glad you asked that. Yeah, <laughs> these, are, these are intergalactic travel agent hats that every intergalactic travel agent is issued when they come work at the Intergalactic Travel Bureau. So we work with a lot of different astronomers um, at this experience. We've planned thousands of space vacations over the years across the U.S. and in England where the Intergalactic Travel Bureau started. And so um, we encourage our astronomers and our travel agents to uh, wear hats. And then you drew the, the, the most important bits of your wisdom into this book, is that right? <laughs> For sure, yeah. It was a real collaboration, you know, with the visitors who came to the Intergalactic Travel Bureau. We got a lot of ideas about what people would be interested in. Yeah, basically when we sit down with somebody, we try to figure out what they like in a vacation, but also what they're interested in, in general, and then um, think about how that could be translated to another world. Um, and so, so uh, a lot of ideas came from visitors, and we also talked to a lot of scientists, so we interviewed many astronomers and planetary scientists. Um, we also interviewed people you might not expect, like uh, we interviewed a physicist that works on um, how the physics of bikes to talk about how uh, a bike might operate on, on Mars. Um, and we talked to space lawyers, which <laughs> we didn't, <laughs> I didn't know existed before <laughs> researching this book. So it's been a really, a really great experience researching for the book. All right, what would you say you can each have your own if you want, is the most underrated place to visit in the solar system? It's a really good question. It is a good one. I mean... Neptune. Yeah, Neptune. <laughs> yeah. We, well, so w when we first started the Intergalactic Travel Bureau, we had sort of like a script for each planet. So, you know, our agents know the basic uh, makeup of, of each place and have some suggestions for what they might do on Neptune or what they might do on any of these locations, but we left Neptune out. So for a number <laughs> you're like, what do we write about Neptune? Well, like, I mean, there's a storm, you know, there's yeah. been a dark st spot, which is a storm in the atmosphere. Um, but, you know, and it's not that Neptune's not interesting, it's just that um, there's just such beautiful pictures from some of these missions, like Cassini and, and now Juno for Jupiter. Uh, it's hard not to be drawn to those images, but um, it's just that we haven't had, you know, uh, a, a probe that has gone near to Neptune recently and so um, so it tends to get left behind a little bit. And what are the kinds of things you say can be done on Neptune while you're Oh yeah, there? so you'll, you'll want to skydive, but you definitely want to choose a, a reputable outfit for that. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, as you're, as you're kind of going through these the blue layers of clouds and as you're getting into it, it's actually quite dark, right? It's in the outer solar system, and so everywhere you're going in the outer solar system is going to be dark compared. So you can imagine just falling through the darkness and slowly it's going to get hotter and denser and eventually you know if you don't uh, rock it back up you're you're going to implode <laughs> and so hopefully you will uh, you'll uh, turn on your rocket before that happens yeah neptune also has a fantastic moon called triton and they think there are geysers there, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty amazing if you think about, if you ever visit Yellowstone and see the geysers mm -hmm. there, you could go to one of Neptune's new moons mm -hmm. and, and see geysers there. You can also see the cantaloupe terrain, which looks like <laughs> a cantaloupe, as you might expect. 